In the 1989 movie, Three Fugitives, Nick Nolte played an ex-con trying to make good. After being released from McNeil Island's Correction Center, he walked these same steps along here to meet his parole officer, played by James Earl Jones. I thought you might be lonesome. I missed you. Five years is a long time. I agree. Should have been 10, I would have missed you more. Five years may seem like a long time, but it pales in comparison to the actual length of time that the prison has been open, 122 years. The medium security facility is the only island prison still in operation in the US today since the closing of Alcatraz. Famous alumni of the prison include the Birdman of Alcatraz and Charles Manson. A 20-minute ride on this boat will take us from the shores of Stillicum to the prison. Other than by air, this is the only way to get to the island. The island covers a little over 4,400 acres with approximately 58 miles of road. The Department of Corrections is responsible for 1,326 acres, while the remaining 3,119 acres are maintained as a wildlife refuge by the Department of Wildlife. Countless deer roam freely, oblivious to the goings-on around them. There are actually two facilities on McNeil Island, the main institution and the work ethic camp, with a combined workforce of a little over 700 full-time employees. But it hasn't always been that way. Actually, this very location where the main institution is, is uh, was a homestead for Ezra Meeker, who was one of the pioneers for uh, the Northwest here. When he came here, uh, and settled in this area, he uh, took, chose this spot, and since he really didn't like living on an island, he moved into Stillicum and then into Puyallup. Uh, in the mid-1800s, the federal government was looking for a territorial prison to uh, locate somewhere in the Puget Sound area, and they finally decided on this very location. And in 1875, McNeil Island Penitentiary opened up and uh, for well over a hundred years it was a federal, a federal prison. Uh, lots of growth and, and changes uh, took place over those years and in the mid-70s uh, the federal government didn't uh, think that this was a, a good location to have a prison so uh, they decided that they were going to close it. And Washington State, in need of bed space, in 1981, took over the operation of the institution and has been operated by the Washington State Department of Corrections since 1981. Today, the main institution houses up to 1,249 medium and long-term minimum custody inmates in five living units. We're in a day room in a living unit, which is basically a common area outside of a inmate's cell. Rick, take me through the day-to-day -day activities that an inmate would go through. Basically, the day begins at 5.30 in the morning when breakfast is served. And then throughout the day, there's a variety of activities that inmates can be involved with. Uh, this is a programming institution, and that means that inmates are supposed to be either working or in school getting working toward their GED and uh, lights out at about 1130 at night. Now when you say working, what kinds of jobs, if you want to use that word, do they have here? The jobs range from uh, being a porter, cleaning uh, like janitorial services, uh, also the kitchen, uh, grounds crews, maintenance, as well as some correctional industries, which would be like uh, the laundry, and we have a furniture factory here that they could possibly have the opportunity to work in. Now, on, on the real world outside, minimum wage is over $5 an hour currently, and I understand that the pay in here is not quite so good. 26 cents an hour is the average uh, wage for an inmate. Aside from the work and the programming, are there recreational opportunities for the inmates? There's, there's a, a number of different uh, recreation uh, activities. That could be anywhere from uh, the yard, getting physical activity, uh, playing baseball. Uh, we have music programs, uh, hobby shop programs. 
If an inmate wants to participate in the music program, it costs five dollars a quarter, mm. and that goes. It's the same with the uh, the hobby shop. Five dollars per quarter to do that. There's also uh, library, law library, uh, a lot of different activities for inmates to do a variety of things during their leisure time. How about church? How does that fall into this? Can they go to any kind of religious services here if they'd like to? Sure. There are uh, a number of different religious groups that come in and put on a program in the chapel. Um, and it's each evening there's uh, a variety of different programs that, that inmates could possibly uh, participate in if they'd like to. Are the inmates allowed to have visitors? Yes. Inmates are allowed to have visitors. They can have up to three visits per week. I understand there's volunteer opportunities here. People in the community, I think you have somewhere around 700 people that currently are involved in the program. Right. We have a very good volunteer program here. A wide variety of individuals mm -hmm. from the community coming in and doing uh, a number of different uh, services and programs here. Uh, religious programs, 12-step, um, uh, educational where they are tutors, and there's a, a real active volunteer force that we have here. This is an actual room where an inmate would serve out his sentence along with a roommate. And as you can see, there really is not a whole lot to this. There's a bed for himself, a bed for the roommate, two desks, and two cabinets to put your clothes in. Now, the inmates serve out their terms in quite a different way on the other side of the island at the work ethic camp. The North Complex houses both long-term minimum security inmates as well as inmates sentenced to the work ethic camp. The work ethic camp houses up to 250 men and 35 women. Housing dormitory style and all inmates work on the island at jobs that support island operations. Uh, the work ethic camp is a four-month program where we teach inmates work ethic skills. Uh, it's four, four phases, each phase during 30 days. The first phase is when they come in, we teach them ethics as far as the work is concerned. We, we, a day may start at 0500, where they get physical fitness, go out on runs and things, try to build teamwork concept more or less. Try to get them in shape, physical fitness, and try to clean the system of uh, things that they've been doing negative to their body to try to build them up and build their confidence up. After that, it generally lasts 45 minutes, they go in, they eat chow. From that point on, they crew supervise, which I am, we take them out for 7.5 hours a day. And generally work is basic in the phase one, where we try to work on the attitude. Uh, we believe basically attitude is one of the most important concepts. When you go out into society, most supervisors say, well, we can teach them the skill, but what we're more concerned with is the attitude. And so we work with that for the first 30, day, 30 days. Uh, upon completion of that successfully, they go to a phase two, where they go to different supervisors who, like, who are more speci specially trained in areas, marine department, uh, ro road repair, paint shop, uh, some get the opportunity to work in the kitchen, learn baking and other skills of that nature. And generally, that's phase two, and they stay in that phase, and they move to a phase three and phase four, and they will stay with that supervisor for three months. We call it phase two, phase three, because generally they go, they might not, they don't change the job, but they change certain education components, and those education components would be things like uh, unlocking your potentials, uh, stress management, anger management, conflict resolution, things that they might need to work to, worked on which they probably weren't successful in their past life. And so basically the faces are broke down in that area. We focus more on the education and the attitude. You may be surprised to learn that community tours are available. Currently they are being held the third Wednesday and Thursday of each month. You must be at least 18 years of age, be able to pass a background check, and be able to walk long distances throughout the main institution. For more information and to schedule your space, call Rick Jordan in the Community Involvement Division at 253-512-6583.